time, a Israeli chutzpan, which there's a lot of them, Baruch Hashem, Am, Am Yisrael is Am Kshe Orif, a lot of uh, rude people sometimes, especially when they don't, they don't have Torah. So it was one guy that uh, decided that, uh, yeah, this Torah, it sounds real, sounds good, but I don't know, I'm reading in the Torah, he says, I'm reading in the Torah that there's somebody named Hillel. Hillel Azakin. Hillel was Kodesh Kodeshim. He never got angry. He was holy. He prayed to Hashem. Is there such a person as Hillel today, 3,000 years later, 2,000 years later? He says, if there's a person like Hillel in our generation, I'll do tshuva. But if there's no person in the generation like Hillel that's righteous like him, then why should I do tshuva? If everybody's Rashaim, why? Hashem's going to kill everybody? That's what everybody says. Why? Hashem's going to send everybody to get No, The answer is yes. And says yes. If everybody's a, if everybody's a rasha, I'll send everybody to get home. He did it already. It's called Noah, generation of Noah. Sodom and Gomorrah. Plenty other times in the Torah. Point is that he says, if there's nobody in a generation like Hillel, why should I do tshuva? So why did he decide to do this chutzpah, this rude person, this arrogant person? He decided, I'm going to test the rabbis. He got a phone book with the names of the poskim in Eretz Yisrael, all the big rabbis. He decided to call them at 2 o'clock in the morning. Not 2 o'clock in the afternoon. 2 o'clock in the morning. Hello? Yeah. Rabbi? Yes. Um, listen, if I have sugar on my apple, do I have to... What blessing do I have to do? Is it etz or is it shakol? Now, obviously, these rabbis are still human beings. Call them at 2 o'clock in the morning. They're not exactly ecstatic. Well, you, you know, unless you're a teenager, no, you don't want anybody calling you at 2 o'clock in the morning. So a lot of the rabbis hung up the phone on him. So he's going one after another, after another, after another. They keep hanging up on him or nobody's answering the phone. He got to the last rabbi. He says, if this rabbi doesn't become Hillel, I've done my job, Hashem. I tried. I've done my job. He calls the number. Hello? This is... This is... Mordechai Eliyahu. How can I help you? Arab Mordechai Eliyahu was the Gdolado. Head rabbi of Eretz Yisrael. Meaning he just called the biggest rabbi in the world. At 2 o'clock in the morning. 2.30 in the morning. Now Mordechai Eliyahu says, Hello, this is Mordechai Eliyahu. How can I help you? And the guy says, Oh, Rabbi, if, I'm, if I have an apple and there's some sugar on it, which bracha do I do? Do I do the etz? Do I do shakol? And he's expecting the rabbi to hang up on him or say, No, chutzpah, you call me at 2 o'clock in the morning. What's the matter with you? Call tomorrow at a normal time. Rabbi Mordechai Eliyahu says, Oh, my son, that's a very good question. He says, see, in the Torah, we have tafel and ikal. We have something that's insignificant and something that's significant. And he starts giving him a shiur about which bracha to do at 2 o'clock in the morning. And he's so patient with them. He says, listen, if you're going to eat the sugar separately from the apple, then you do shakol and you do the etz. But you first bless the etz. But if you're going to eat it together, since the sugar is insignificant in comparison to the apple, you just do sha'etz and it includes the sugar as well. And he's giving him a shiur, ooh, a half hour shiur. But why to do this blessing at 2 o'clock in the morning? He says, any more questions, my son? And he says to him, you know, Rabbi, I have to tell you the truth. And he tells him the whole story of why he called. He tells him the whole story of why he called. And he says, I was looking for a reason of why I shouldn't do tshuva. But apparently we do have a Hillel in our generation. And because of you, tomorrow, I'm going to start going to yeshiva. Why? Why did Rav Mordechai Eliyahu have such a merit? Because he knew, yes, you can yell at people. Yes, you can scream at people. Yes, you can do a lot of things. But you have to know when, how, and who. Most importantly, 
regardless of what shita you're going to use, regardless of what strategy you're going to use, some is a loud voice, some is a low voice, some is uh, with jokes, some it's with scary stories, some it's straight to your face, some it's behind your back, whatever it is. Make sure you act with love. This is the confusion that a lot of people have when it comes to Musab. They think that if you're screaming and fire and brimstone, that means you hate people. It's the opposite. It's the opposite. If you're telling people things, you spill your guts, you tell people, please do tshuva, or this is going to happen, or that's going to happen, what are you telling people? Please do tshuva, because I'm trying to warn you. There's a fire, it's on the way. If you don't get out of the way, you're going to get burned. 